this meeting to order. This is the meeting of the Students Oversight Committee on Wednesday, February 24th, 2021. Um, first of the roll call, um, I'll call out your name and uh, you know what to do. Uh, Kingston Cole, you're off mute, but we see you there. If you're not there, you can tell us. <laughs> I'm here. Steven? I'm here. You're here. Lucy? Here. Thank you. Rebecca? Here. Rebecca's here. Wonderful. Pat? I'm here. See you, Pat. Here. Okay. And Larry? Larry here. True is here. Max? I'm here. You're here. Okay. And Carolyn? Last Howdy. but not least, by I'm far. I'm here. Lovely. Nice to see you all. Okay. So uh, the next item on the agenda is open time for public expression. And we have no public, so I think we can pretty much close that quite quickly. Uh, with that, uh, we'll go to item five, which is uh, Mark, uh, Mark's uh, executive officer report, which is a verbal report. Stephen, please. Yeah, um, I have a, a comment about the agenda that was sent out. Can is this a, a time that I can bring that up? It's just real quick. Um, I don't. We have a spot in here where we ask for. No, no go we ahead. Actually, we missed it. It was right after roll call. It was, was it? Wait a minute. Did I miss it? Oh, I'm so sorry. Item three: agenda adjustments. Forgive me. It was at the bottom. Okay. Okay. It's just this is mostly, I guess, to Mark, and it's about uh, the wording of item four, open time for public expression. Uh, it talks about the board of directors, and and um, although it's nice to think ah. we have that power, we're we're only the citizens oversight committee, and Good. maybe in the future, um, wording reflecting this particular group might be a good idea. The um the the downfall of cut and paste. Thank you for catching that. And I, right. and, I, and I think and I think Lucy pointed that out to me once before on another aspect of the um, and I think I fixed that part down at the bottom. But thank you for catching that for me. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Great. Right. So that's all. Thank you, Steve. Well, thank you so much. Sorry, sorry, I missed that item. Okay. So uh, we went through item four, and there still is no no public. Uh, and we'll move on to item five, which is executive officer report. Mark. The floor is yours. Good morning, everybody. Or, oh, man. Good Come evening. On. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Um, I'll try to be as succinct as I can, given um, the amount of activity that we've had within the MWPA lately. Uh, I'll start with the board of directors. And um, we have some draft vision and mission statements. We're still refining them based on some of the feedback that we received from the um, the board members during our last meeting, we didn't want to get into a, a 17 person wordsmithing exercise. So there's been some feedback that we've received and we're, we're still working on that. And we hope to be able to finalize that vision and mission statements um, at our next meeting. We're also going to dive into values, goals, and objectives during that next meeting as a third part of our um, strategic planning retreat. I'm very excited that we were able to successfully launch the request for proposal for our environmental consulting firm. I think the work that we put into it is going to um, pan out very successfully and get us a, a, a very reputable and strong um, firm that'll work well with us. We closed our recruitment for the planning and program manager Monday at two o'clock. Um, I'm not gonna give too many details except to say that I am very happy um, and very is included in that with the applicant pool and the people that we have moving forward in the interviews. Um, I, I'm very pleased. Uh, bordering on excited. Um, Grizzly Corps is a um, organization that's attached to AmeriCorps. And maybe you heard me talk about this a little bit. Um, they provide um, recently graduated students as fellows to organizations very similar to ours to, in order to create capacity, um, a lot of it has to do with farming and forest resiliency, but they are also focusing on wildfire resiliency. And so we are going to be in, uh, applying for um, a fellow and it comes with a $20,000 price tag for us. And we get a college educated employee for 11 months and they carry the rest of the freight on that. And we provide a, um, a work location for them. And within the application, we have to describe what we anticipate the work 
um, items will be. And we just received feedback from Grizzly uh, Core that they really like what we are presenting. So um, granted, it's not a yes, but we feel confident in, um, with that application. Uh, we recently had our finance committee meeting where we started developing the budget framework and it's a very, very early portion of it where we're just developing framework. Um, and then the operations committee and the, the subcommittee, the ad hoc subcommittee, finance ad hoc subcommittee of the operations committee will take the value that we've given to them in the core budget and start working on what the projects are going to be for this year's core projects. And I'm, our target right now is to tell the, the operations committee that they have $10 million to spend. Um, so that is going to be a, a very aggressive uh, task for them to tackle, um, but that's exactly what the MWPA is supposed to be doing. Um, in order to understand where the 80% totals, that five-year average that we need to have for 80%, we had to do uh, quite a bit of, of digging and fortunately, uh, NBS, who helps us with our tax collection, was able to do the major number crunching for us. They also found out that um, uh, we have a we earned 19.7 million in this fiscal year rather than 19.3, so an increase of 400,000, which always is good news. Um, and I we are making a recommendation to the finance committee, and we'll see how the finance committee moves forward with this to not. Um, use the cost of living adjustment that we could use for the 21-22 based on the economy, based on the um, things that have happened to people economically due to COVID-19 and that we were able to create a reserve this year. We think it's the, the appropriate thing not to use the cost of living adjustment. Um, it seemed like that had good support, but going back to the five zones, we were able to look at the APN, the parcel number tables, and notice that the first three numbers, I call it a block. I don't know if that's really the term that it's used, um, really lined up with the five geographical areas very well. And um, minus two blocks were split between two zones and we were able to find another differentiation in there. And so now we have a very accurate table of what was earned in each of the five geographical zones. And so that was part of the, um, I wasn't able to make it part of the finance committee packet because it got to me that morning, but the op has those numbers and our future finance committee meetings will have those drawn out numbers. And I'll close out with the ops committee and advisory technical committee are, are hard at work. They have a good plan of attack to build the 21-22 uh, work plan and um, they're putting a lot of hours in right now. We have an operations committee meeting tomorrow at three. I'm open to any questions from y'all. Yeah. Uh, Please. Yeah, I have a, and then Lucy. you didn't mention it, but you have an $8 million um, surplus of the 2021. And that's, you've got, you've got that in reserve. And you, have to, you have to spend it over the next five years. We are gonna spend it. Um, however, we are concerned about having the bandwidth to being able to spend it in the best way. So some of that 8 million will be used as a bridge to get us through the beginning of the fiscal year. And we're going to have to do this every year because we don't get the tax dump from the county until um, uh, December. So we're always going to have to have some type of bridge money to get us from July 1 to December. Uh, we'll be working with the finance committee to develop a reserve policy and then we'll find out what our reserve should be and then start spending down the rest of that 8 million. And we don't want to let it linger for a long time. We want to get it spent. Don't you have to roll it out over five years? You could 80, spend 80% of it over five years? That's where it ran. So, so, so like the 80% the is um, for this of the core, the, the core budget, the 60%, that 80% smoothed over five years. Okay. That is um, of that 10 million that will be each year. On average, we need to spend 80% that was gained within a geographical area. So let's use round numbers. Let's say Southern Marin uh, gained $1 million in the fiscal year 21, 22. And you know, for the sake of argument, we didn't put any escalators. So over that period of five years, they gained 5 million. And 60% of that 5 million is the core budget. 80% of that must have been spent in Southern Marin over the five-year average. Yeah. 
it's, so it's not reflective of the of the reserves, but we would have to make sure the reserves are spent accurately across the table. Yeah, I also noticed you didn't. You're not. You're not going to apply an escalator. At least the staff recommended that you not do that. Is that going to be a year by year decision? It's a it, according to the ordinance. It's a year by year decision that must be made prior to the fiscal year. Okay. Thanks, uh, Lucy. You had your hand up. Uh, yeah, I was just curious, what is the Grizzly Corps fellow going to be doing? What specifically would they be attending to? There's three tasks that we're targeting. Mm -hmm. One of the tasks is to support our smaller agencies that don't have the staff on board to be able to help plan with their projects, um, specifically Muir Beach, Stinson Beach, Bolinas, and Inverness, being volunteer agencies. They don't have a, a large staff and um, the amount of money that is being pushed into them for local mitigation projects is a little bit of a challenge on their staff. So we want some support there. We're looking at helping to develop and um, there's several people that, um, and Pat, I'm looking at you right now, you're one of them that are looking at creating good educational material for the homeowners to have, a, it's really a culture change. People have this idea of how they want their houses to look. And when they hear defensible space, they think that we're asking to cut out all the trees and um, have barren yards. And that's really not the case. And we really need to have a strong educational campaign to help uh, with that uh, culture change and this vision of what, how nice homes can look when they are um, hardened and have defensible space. And then um, the third project is looking into the future. This year, we're really focusing on house out approach. We're not really going to get into landscape level projects, but three, four years down the road, we're going to start getting into landscape, landscape level projects. And when I say that, I'm talking thousands of acres type projects, right? And there's going to be a lot of uh, um, hurdles and challenges to get through that. And so we are looking at the primary areas and they're like the, um, the subdivisions between our geographical areas, Big Rock Ridge, Terra Linda Divide, Blythdale Ridge, the Marin Headlands and the Bolinas Ridge as areas that could be landscape level project locations. And so we would be starting the process of identifying the challenges, identifying the stakeholders and identifying a path forward so that when we are ready for landscape level projects in three to five years, we aren't starting that process then. Sounds like an interesting job. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Uh, Larry, please. Yeah, you know, um, Mark, you had mentioned uh, needing to put together a reserve and you know this was the first tax payment, uh, even though it was passed last March. Um, where, where do you see uh, cash flow and the need to have projects um, implemented as soon as possible, um, you know, either, coinciding and having the timing right? Or do you see some elements of it where, uh, you know, you might have missed opportunities? Uh, and, and, and maybe if I'm, I, what I'm really reading into your question is, do we have the liquidity to be able to move forward on projects? Yeah. I feel we do. Okay. To give you a short answer on that. Yeah. Could, uh, is the authority allowed to take out debt if they need it? 10% of our, I, I can't remember exact total, but the, in the ordinance, there is a, a debt um, limit of 10%. Okay, yeah, I guess with interest rates being low, there's always the option of tax anticipation notes. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Great, uh, any more questions um, with that? And I'll just say, I, I am just so impressed. Um, I'm sure numbers of you have gone to some of the more recent meetings, MWPA meetings like last week and just so impressed with all the work that's going on really simultaneously. Mark, I just wanted to really say that it's really a lot of balls in the air at the same time. It's the strength of the 17 member agencies and the talents that we have within those member agencies, yeah, to be honest sure. with you. So with that, we'll move on to uh, item number six, which is the consent calendar. And that is to approve the minutes of January 26, 21. With someone, does anyone have any comment first? Larry, please. Uh, just a minor correction at the end of the minutes um, when I was suggesting um, future agenda items, uh, it, it stated as rules and responsibilities. That was roles and responsibilities. We'll get that fixed. 
Okay, and then just as a matter of clarification, uh, I know these are summary minutes, but um, would it be more useful if there was at least a context for the questions that were asked, even if there's not a lot of detail, because all it says is, you know, the, the committee had questions. I can guarantee you that Carolyn feels the same. And it's been brought up at you the know, board meeting. Mark. <laughs> yeah, you can. Can I, can I speak, Mark? The, oh, oh, wait a minute, Carolyn. We'll get to you. Okay. No, I, I think Carolyn's point's probably better before mine. Yeah, well, I just wanted to let everybody know that I brought this up at the public comment of the board meeting the other day and said that I wasn't finding the minutes very useful because they're not they don't include the content of what the committee members say. So other other board members uh, picked up on that and said they seem to agree. And uh, Bruce said they will review this. Uh, apparently at some point they made a decision to do action minutes. That's what uh, Bruce said, Bruce Goyne. So uh, I'm not sure what that means, but I, I can yeah. figure it out. So yeah, they're, they're taking it up, which I'm glad to to know. And when, when I looked into it, it was um, more of an administrative decision at the executive committee level. So um, it's something that's going to be not difficult to unwind. In fact, the next board meeting minutes, you will see more content in them. They'll still be considered action minutes, but more content. No, no, just, please, you, you're still speaking. And then just one other suggestion. Um, Maybe we can put the link to the videos on, on the minutes so people can then re refer to them. That would be easy. Yeah. All right. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Um, what we need now is a motion to approve the minutes. Uh, Stephen? We so have moved with the uh, correction. Okay. And Kingston, we have a second. Uh, do we need to take roll call? I don't think so. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. So we shall move on. Uh, there's no public comment. Um, number Item number seven is create an ad hoc subcommittee to inquire into the into ESP and other environmental groups dealing with the MWPA to develop findings and recommendations. So here we are. Uh, who would like to move on? The, who, I think, Kingston, this was your lead. It, it, it was definitely. Yes, sir. So, <laughs> I, mean, I think the arguments were made last week. I think we, we had a motion to, uh, at the uh, last meeting, we had, had a motion that was, I think, carried unanimously to create this subcommittee. So I'm just very simply asking to see if anyone is interested, probably a maximum of two or three people, to join me um, in looking and being on this subcommittee. Now, I'm happy to be on the subcommittee simply because I can probably answer a lot of no, questions. No, I'm, that's one thing that can't be done. You're one of the people we want to investigate. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you have me there, wouldn't that be yeah, so right. much easier? We want, to, we want to inquire of you, Larry. <laughs> Otherwise, no, you're going to sit down and we're going to take your deposition. No, just kidding. Kingston, if I may speak. <laughs> if I, I, I think I'd like to be interested. Is a problem there? I, a couple of people, you know. I think Carolyn is, is probably got the same problem. Other than that, I don't think that we yeah. anybody else has got. You know, I'd welcome the company. Is all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I may make make a comment. We're, sure. I prefer the word not investigating because there's I, not I, really there's a lot to learn. There's a lot of education, but investigating would suggest that there's something you're looking for that's a miss. And I, and be preferable to call this an educational journey, if I may, <laughs> because that's what it's really going to be, I think, for everybody. You know, so that's your prerogative, Larry. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. So let's go forward with that, Carolyn, please, and then well, uh, Pat. Yeah, I just want to add to that, no, Carolyn. Um, by excluding people that are on. I, I guess just the ESP that's being investigated, or is there other no. groups? No, it's, it's the related agencies. No, Fern would be one of them, yeah. Okay, because, yeah, you seem to be setting this up in a kind of an adversarial way. I mean, what guarantees do we have that this is going to be a fair inquiry if you're not allowing us to participate? Well, first of all, I think you have a conflict of interest. 
but it, it, you're you're trying to create an influence, which I, I don't grant. I don't think we're, we're we're trying to be adversarial, and I think very maybe you feel a little put upon, but in fact, it's just we'd like to get to the bottom of it. You want? I mean, I don't want to go through all the arguments again, but you were up on the website um, for in, in, in the relationship between all the different groups, you know, interrelated. And it's, we want to find out what's going on, how long it's been going on, and, and how great it is. And I guess you're going to tell us all right, when we ask you. Very nice. I don't know what the outcome's going to be. I simply don't. Right. Carolyn, are you finished with your question? Because yes. Pat is next. Pat, please. I was just no. going to make the observation that um, in the um, the agenda item says inquire. It doesn't say investigate. Right. Uh, and I, I, I too don't think that this is necessarily um, an adversarial procedure, but it's also one where people who have conflict of interest uh, probably shouldn't be doing the inquiring. <laughs> it really puts me in an odd position because <laughs> it really isn't. There's no real conflict. That's all I, I can say. But that's what will be. That's what will turn up. There's no conflict of interest. We're all working for the same thing. Uh, Max, please. Yeah, just a uh, just a question. Since um, since Larry and uh, and Caroline are, are active members of, of Fern and, and ESP, um, if we had a subcommittee, or or it looks like we're going to have a subcommittee, we voted on having a subcommittee to look into. Uh, partnership entity, um, and advocacy groups. Uh, how, how would that work um, if Larry and Caroline or anyone else for that matter um, were, were in the in the groups uh, being looked at uh, because they couldn't attend the subcommittee meetings because they're a member of the COC, right? So because of the Brown Act. So if they're not a member, then they can't actually a answer questions to the to the subcommittee, if that makes sense, <laughs> right? They're they're actually excluded from the conversation, which is which is okay because there's other members of their group. But just to to sure. set that up, um, that's true. Yeah, yeah. That's... Uh, I also full disclosure, I, I am a member of the ESP, but I have attended but one meeting in uh, a year and a half, so I don't I don't think of myself as an active member. No, you're out the door, Max. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a waiver. <laughs> uh, one, of, one of the things is that uh, Belle Cole is not part of the COC and she uh, was part of the formation of, of this whole thing and, and it's probably as, as close as we can get to a historian of the of what's been going on. Right. And so, Mike, Mike Swayze, of course. No, she's first on the list that is, is Larry because he was right there with her. Yeah. So, what did they know and when did they know it? That's it. Right. <laughs> But but that's the challenge with with Larry, right? Is is if because Larry's on the COC, if you have a three member COC committee and it does not include Larry, you can't talk to Larry without a Brown Act violation, right? Well, we can. Oh, you four can. Is, four is the minimum. Four. Oh, four is the minimum. Nine. Four. Right. Four okay. Sorry. Right. Four. Yeah. If you had three, that would be fine. But yeah. but the other way to talk to me is in the public forum, of course. So, or or Carolyn for that for that matter, if it's public, if we're, if if you have questions, if if you've generated a number of questions, and you're saying, oh, Brown Act, we can't have Larry Carolyn there, but we certainly can do it right here. I think we'll take you one at a time. <laughs> Please, yeah. Car uh, Carolyn, your hand is up. Please. I'm wondering if we need to um, be a little more precise in defining what is being uh, looked into with these groups. It's, it's pretty vague right now. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, would help. Sort of a goal, a, a mission or a goal. What, what, what outcome do you want, Kingston? Are you, and you don't have to quote that now, but it, it does need to be thought through. I think that, that the subcommittee will work that out, okay, with, with the limitations. But I do want input from other people. My sense is just an overall look at you to determine, start at the beginning, come work our way to all the way through it. Okay, talk with all the important people. Okay, and uh, also we want to talk with members of the MWPA board because I have no idea why why um, ESP's got its insignia up on the board and you know, how that worked out. So there's, there's all sorts of, I don't know, the answers we don't know, 
the subcommittee will define it. I think a general approach is, is probably going to be the best one right now. Yeah, I can imagine that, that the, the, the subcommittee will talk to Bell, probably Jason Weber, since he was uh, the, the yeah. beaner of the first ESP meeting. Very Perhaps nice. David Long from, from Fern, since he's uh, uh, intimately involved and has been in uh, with both the MWPA and, of course, with Fern. Yeah. Um, I, I just don't go far enough back on this. You know, I, I don't have the the the, um, the um, uh, learning curve is is steeper for me because I, I just came on this board right go see but there are CWP people and other people that have been here a long time uh, been involved in this this whole concept from the beginning yeah I'd like to have them a couple of them on with me okay mm -hmm. and, and I might suggest you talk to Bill Tyler as well the uh, fire chief of Novato because he 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 was there at the very beginning too Bill, yeah Bill was, that's true the big that's true. Well, uh, Kingston, I'd be happy to join you if you're looking for people or if there's some others that you want. Thank you. Yeah. Lucy, please. No, I, I'm saying I, if, you need, if you need another, I will join you, though I'm feeling very overloaded. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why you should take it on. <laughs> Give it to a busy person, Lucy. That's, that's the rule. <laughs> well, you know the numbers to call on the people, on both of you. So I know that that helps tremendously. So I'm, I'm I don't mind doing the yeoman work. Just just um, help me get started, Ken. Okay. Very good. Uh, so with that, I think that kind of um, that's it. And I don't I don't know that we need a vote or any any formal motion at this point. Uh, I would I would recommend you. Uh, yeah, you don't need to do, have a vote for this. This is an ad hoc subcommittee, and barring um, barring bylaws that um, dictate how um, you create um, an ad hoc subcommittee, I think you can come to a consensus that. Uh, right. Mark, are you saying that we can operate more efficiently without bylaws? That's that. That's not what I said. <laughs> I, I, I heard that not. too. <laughs> <laughs> Can we load on that? We're all into our meeting early. That sounds great. We don't have to do <laughs> something more. Uh, I would not mind a, a, a motion um, that would just use the exact wording that we've got okay. on this item. Would, would uh, someone like to make a motion in that case? And we'll just formalize it so that it's official. Stephen, sure. please make a motion. Uh, shall Go I ahead. Go? Floor is yours. I second. Okay. <laughs> Oh, okay. First and second. Okay. So we got Stephen, we got Pat uh, seconding the language with the language as written in item number seven. Seven. Yeah. We appoint an ad hoc subcommittee to inquire into ESP and other environmental groups dealing with the MWPA. Yeah. And so you'll, you'll come back to us, I assume, next month and give us some parameters as to what you would like to accomplish and which groups you're going to so, so that we all have a framework. Okay. Right. So we know where it's, where we're going with a, with a, with an ad hoc. So. We may get started with the interviews very quickly. <laughs> you never know. We'll be all over in a month. <laughs> Max, you, you've been very patient. Please. Yeah. Um, just yeah. just wondering if we want to incorporate into the motion uh, who we're putting on the ad hoc uh, subcommittee. It sounded like Kingston and. Um, Lucy volunteered. I, I'm not sure if there was a third. And Stephen. And yeah. Stephen. That'd be nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it would probably be in the minutes regardless. Okay, so okay. we'll want to add that committee composed of those three people. Boom. That are, et cetera. Okay. So, so we should probably vote on the. On oh, the, no kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, it, we, we will operate like the Senate does. Uh, here no, the no, 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 no. We're going to get stuff done. You want a filibuster? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I, was at, I thought Larry right. was bad. Larry, you look like you're about to raise your hand, but I'm not oh. sure. Go ahead. I was just waiting for you to finish. Um, I was wondering if it creates a quorum problem if you have to interview both Larry Minikies and Carolyn. I think we do. Uh, we would do. We would not do them together at all. Yeah, but you'd still have a serial meeting. Yeah, but but we can talk to Bell, and we can talk to David, and we can talk to Ken. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to um, um, 
what's his name, Bill, uh, up in Nevada. So, Larry, you want to have Bill speak for you? Speak two or four? No. Oh, uh, nothing. Go ahead. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Bell will speak for Bell, believe me. So, Larry, okay. Larry's point is well taken is that if it was a three person ad hoc, right, and you meet with two additional members, then it turns into a serial meeting, right? You uh, can meet with one in a month, right? Yeah. Wouldn't that be correct? So, one of us, only, only one more. So, right. but the thing is, Mark, is that um, when we come back with what we're looking at and what we find. Our public discussion can include Larry and Carolyn and they can fill in holes and, and whatever since it's- And I think that was the point Larry was making that so yeah. we can get past it by having it be in a public meeting at a later date. Yep. Right. Yep. Exactly. I mean, I'm, frankly, I'm really excited that you guys are digging into this because from the very beginning, if you remember the very first meeting, I said it's really important everyone understands how everything is interacting. I, this is this has been my feeling since December one, so yeah. it's it's actually quite welcome. Okay. All right, I I think we close the motion at this point, and um, we will move on to item eight, which is monitoring the sign. Vote on it still. I'm sorry. I think we need to vote on the motion. Oh, vote. Oh, yes. Sorry. But I thought I I thought I suggested that we use the. Uh, what the Senate, U.S. Senate does, which is hearing no objections, the motion is, is passed. Do I hear an objection? Anybody hear an objection? Nope, done. <laughs> All right, Mark, are you okay with that? That for, happens. For, for non-substantive non um, items, yes, but we start yeah. getting to any substantive type items, right. we'll have to do a roll call. Right, that would and be This different. is a, a substantive, all right. Do it. Let's vote. Okay. I, no, I was I was not recommending a vote for this one. No, right. Good. Okay. Very good. Very good. Item number eight. Monitoring assignments. Sorry, Max. Partner <laughs> eight. Need public comment, do we? <laughs> okay. I'll try one more time. Monitoring assignments for partner agencies and entities. The recommendations discuss the need for the COC to monitor meetings of partner agencies and entities. Uh, would, that's a typo on my part that this is the opportunity for you guys to have the report out for the committees that you were monitoring. Okay. My apologies for the typo. Quite, quite okay. Uh, would anyone like to give any reports at this point? Carolyn, please. Sure. Uh, Lucy and I attended the board meeting, which I believe was last Thursday. And um, Mark has already reported on it, but there's a couple of items that you might be interested in. Um, it, one of them is uh, Mark actually in his report included uh, how the Marin map might be useful to the MWPA. If you're familiar with the Marin map, it's an ongoing project uh, using LIDAR. I don't even know what that is, but never mind. It's high tech. It's got all these layers and there are gonna be, there are already a section of it for the Marin Wildfire Authority. Um, and it's gonna show the treatable landscape of the vegetation treatment plan. And there's a story map already on uh, the MWPA website under programs. So that's just an informational item. And then, um, there, there was a lengthy discussion with the CEQA attorney about, she's presented another letter uh, in a answering uh, the ad hoc committee's uh, questions. And that's in the packet. I don't think we probably have time to go through it all. Uh, it's mostly about the CEQA exemptions and members wanna know, you know how broad they are basically and how useful they might be for MWPA. So um, since other people will be reporting on, uh, I assume, Ops Committee and uh, Advisory Technical, I will leave it at that unless Lucy has anything to add. Nope, I thought you did an excellent job, Carol. <laughs> right, I wrote up a report, but you don't get to see it. It's, uh, it's too detailed. <laughs> okay, uh, do we have any more reports at this time? Seeing none, we'll move on. Very good. 
Okay, so uh, the next item is item number nine. It's to discuss uh, what we're doing today. Uh, change of time, date and time, day and time for the Citizens Oversight Committee meetings. And the suggestion is that we move to a Wednesday to allow more time for fire safe, which I assume a number of you attended last night as I did. And um, we will open it to discussion uh, or a motion. Uh, Pat, you, you, please. So uh, I don't think it necessarily has to move to a Wednesday, not that I object to a Wednesday, but it could be any Tuesday of the month other than the fourth or last Tuesday, which is when, um, you know, it could be the third Tuesday of every month. Uh, I don't think we need to exclude Tuesdays, um, but just exclude the Tuesday where uh, FireSafe Moran has its regular uh, webinars. Um, well, when, I, for when, one, don't really like having these two nights in a row when I have my uh, evening sort of uh, interrupted. <laughs> when, when is the Fire Safe Marin meeting? It's the last Tuesday of every month. It's either the last or the fourth. They go back and forth, they seem to. Okay. Uh, but, but either the last or the fourth, which usually are the same thing. Right. Right. Um, I do have conflicts the other two Tuesdays, however. Oh, okay. Um, and Wednesday at the Do you NCL have a conflict board. on the third Tuesday? Yes, NCL board. Larry, please. Yeah, I think one of the reasons why we picked the fourth week was it follows the board meeting. Right. That's, uh -huh. Thank you for reminding us. That is correct. And if, if my memory serves, and unless people's uh, schedules have changed dramatically since we polled, it was the first and the fourth Tuesdays that were uh, uh, mutually available between the nine of you. And there was very, very little mutual availability. No. Um, Max, your hand is up, please. Just, just a comment um, that we're all here. So it appears that the fourth Wednesday uh, works for, for a lot of folks. Um, That's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. How, how about I suggest we try the fourth Wednesday and if we're really finding issues with it, we, we, we open it up again as an agenda item. Is everyone good with that? And the other thing is we have an opportunity on time. Is everyone happy with 5.30? I think that's Seeing really only Positive nods, okay. How, how about Mark? Do, do you have any conflicts with other events and things going on? Okay. This is, this is my life, Stephen. Mark, Mark would bend over backwards for the COC. But, any but day not good week. at being in two meetings at once. I'm that, that, that. Um, is a fair point. And no, there's no conflict for a Wednesday. Good. Okay. <laughs> and and Max, Max can let us know if he retires early and gets free during the daytime, since the rest of us could be meeting earlier. <laughs> well, not the members of the public who join. <laughs> I, I, I strongly believe that no civic or government meeting should be held during work hours. <laughs> uh, well, the yeah. other MPA. <laughs> For what it's worth, I like to go to seven. It, you know, gives us time to have a little dinner before the meeting. And I think a lot of outfits do meet at seven. So that would be my preference, but if everybody likes it, okay. Oh. We can open it for discussion for a moment. How do people feel about seven? You can give a thumbs up, thumbs down, very simple. I like it. Oh, okay, good. Have you not eaten dinner? Right? Goes, no Rebecca says no. What's up? Pat what? says no. Oh, Pat, you two, are, you, you always have dinner dates at that time? Oh, and <laughs> oh, oh, well. I, 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 you know, I could do it. It's just that as the, as the evening gets on, my, I get less yes. and less able, you know, tireder, and so I'm less able to focus. But that's, you know, I can do it. I can be you know what? a big late night. Here's a suggestion because we don't have to be married to a time when it gets to the summertime, we may want to shift it a little later to like seven. We may feel that way because we have more daylight to work with. So let's keep it flexible. As long as we give enough advice to the public. Notice, you know, notice Rebecca's response. <laughs> Just get quiet. <laughs> Max, please, and then I, I was I was going to say five thirty is fine for me right now, but um, once people are working not remotely anymore, then uh, I, I would probably be working until you know five thirty or six, and then commuting for forty five minutes, right? So 
at that right. point, um, seven would would be would be great. But okay, we'll definitely take open cases as they are. That's at least six more months. <laughs> Mine will be easy to tell whether it's working or not because I turn into a pumpkin <laughs> before midnight, even. <laughs> oh, way before. <laughs> Okay, uh, Larry, did you have your hand? I thought you had your hand up. Yeah, um, Allison or Mark can clarify this, but um, the regular meeting concept is a regular date and time. Yeah. So if we do bounce around, we would just have to call special meetings. Ah. That's ugly. And, and we get we need to be cognizant of what Allison needs or is available for. Right. right. This this blank picture we've got here, or non picture. Uh, Allison, I suppose you're listening. Yes, I am here. Thank you. <laughs> um, I don't have any comments on this item now. Okay. <laughs> and um, there's if if Allison's not available, we have other means of of facilitating the meeting. Oh. Thank you, Allison. Mm -hmm. But she's much better at it. <laughs> All right. Let me see. Um, where are we? Do we need a vote? I think we do. If you do. Uh, we need we need someone we need someone to make a motion. I I'll I'll make a motion to move our meetings to the fourth Wednesday of the month, uh, starting at five thirty uh, p.m. Uh, and to uh, bring this item back for review, let's say in six months in July. Is that in six months? No. No. Oh, <laughs> There's something like it. So yeah. you're, right. you're right. You're correct. Four months in June. How about that? In four months in June, we'll we'll review and see if if people are are. There you are go. With yeah. That. Yeah. Very good. And could we have a second, please? Stephen is our second. Um, all in favor, uh, raise your hands. No no opposition. The motion passes unanimously. So we go on to now item 10, which is the proposed citizen oversight committee bylaws. And this is to review, discuss, to discuss and review draft bylaws of the oversight committee. And um, Mark, I'd like to open it to you. Uh, you mentioned you'd like to make a comment before we uh, dig into this wonderful item. So please, uh, the floor is yours. If you don't mind, um, you know, listening to all the different meetings and then um, offline conversations. So I thought I'd share my thoughts with you all um, and my viewpoints and my very strong desire to have a proactive COC. Um, I firmly believe in that. It's what's best for the taxpayers' dollars. And I think a report after the fact of inappropriate spending is not doing what is best for our taxpayers. Um, I'm very supportive of complete transparency. Um, I believe we are setting a new standards for transparency, at least for the government agencies I've worked for. Um, it is time consuming um, in the front end, but I, I value it. And I think it'll actually cause, um, create less spent time at the end. If we're fully transparent all the way through it, then at the tail end of our projects, there's not much of a need for um, any extra work. Um, I really um, like and support the monitoring assignments of all the boards and committees. I think they're essential. Um, in fact, I look forward to seeing all your names um, in each of our meetings over on the list. Um, but I do want to be completely honest with you. I'm not in favor of the invoice, but not voting. And I'll, I'll, I'll let you know why. And I think it's important that you hear it from me in this forum than any other forum. Um, I believe I've developed a trust with you folks and I want to continue that trust and I and trust doesn't mean always agreeing. We can disagree and still have trust with each other. Um, and when it comes to it, this will be my advice to the board. Now, again, it's only advice. I'm not decision making authority. I'm advisory. Um, but I not only will I explain why I'm not supportive, I'm going to I describe um, how I think we can get to proactive without being invoiced but not voting. Um, there's some really um, principles that I firmly believe in that have helped me um, succeed within my professional career. That's accountability, lines of communication, process, making mistakes, and brainstorming. And I believe bad ideas and mistakes help lead to brainstorming. 
piece the ultimate accountability with the nwpa is with board of directors and i have a helping to maintain that accountability and then it's up to the, the board of directors are accountable to the taxpayers and that's where the coc comes in as the voice of the taxpayers to maintain that accountability of the board of directors and so that's why i see the insertion point for the coc into the mwpa is at the board level and not at the committee level it's up to each of the committees to, a to hold themselves accountable and if they fail in holding themselves accountable then it's the next level that holds them accountable so if um, advisory technical committee starts to struggle with their own accountability then it's the operations committee that needs to start pushing down the accountability and so on and so forth up to the board so what i ask for the coc is to hold the board accountable while the board holds operations accountable and operations holds the advisory technical committee accountable and along with holding the board accountable i ask that you guys hold me accountable when it comes to lines of communications, there's we know that there's two forms, two types of, lines of communications. There's formal lines of communication, and there's informal lines. The, the the organizational chart that was part of the board packet shows the formal lines of communication, and you see that the the formal insertion point is with the board of directors. Um, and then as I, it also those lines of communication help with um, define the process and. Um, I'll, I'll, as I discuss the process, I'll talk about making mistakes and, brain, in, and brainstorming. I'll explain why I don't favor the formal lines of communications at the different levels between formal line of communication between the COC and the different levels of the organization. I'll, I'll get to that, though, I promise. Informal lines, I'm also a believer in informal lines of communication as long as people are disciplined on how they use them. They do help speed the process. They do help build relationships amongst the different levels of the organization, which helps leads to trust. Excuse me. However, they can um, create confusion and conflicting messages. And that could be um, an informal line of communication that someone has with one board member or one committee member. And that committee member on advisory technical committee doesn't necessarily say what the overall message of the advisory uh, committee is. So that's that's one of the, the fallbacks or the downfalls of um, informal communications. The process, and I'm a big believer in following process. Um, each level of the organization committee and individuals has their expertise and roles and responsibilities. Um, and they have their... Um, their, their, their niche that they fit into. And I really like pushing people outside of their comfort zone. But there are times that we need to stay within our roles, responsibilities, and expertise. So part of the process is for the MWPA to be able to speak as one voice. So in order for the COC to speak as one voice, there needs to be deliberations as a committee at a public meeting. So if COC members sit in voice but not voting, they can only speak for the COC <coughs> after public deliberations. So if you have a concern while you're sitting in voice at a committee, um, you, yeah, you can ask questions and be able to get answers, but I think you can ask questions, get answers in an informal environment, but you can't give any type of opinion as uh, sitting in voice without going back to the COC in a public deliberation and find out what the overall voice of the COC is. And again, with, when it comes to this part of the process, the COC is an opinion. It's, it's not a decision. It's the board of directors that ultimately make the decision. So our process is that the advisory technical committee reports to the ops, ops reports to the board and report votes, like I mentioned, reports to the voters and you guys are the voice of the voters. Uh, the EO, the executive officer and staff provides uh, guidance along the way. Um, and that being said, I wouldn't be in favor of the board of directors sitting in at the advisory technical committee because that's not part of our process. Um, and it stifles creativity and learning. And quite frankly, it's not their expertise to be sitting in at the advisory technical committee. And one of my concerns is that if the COC starts sitting in and, and, and engaging at the committee levels, it could mission creep into advisory. And advise, if you, you can't be 
advisory and oversight as well. If you gave advice to a decision for the NWPA, how do you provide oversight for that decision? Making mistakes, early in my battalion chief career, this was, um, I, I, I struggled with this. Um, I, the, some of my mentors told me that I did not let my captains make enough mistakes. And I'm like going, well, that's total crazy talk. And now we're not talking on the fire ground, we're talking day to day. And then as I matured in my leadership and my management, I found that mistakes are vital. And now I'm a firm believer of encouraging people to make mistakes. If you aren't making mistakes, you aren't trying hard enough. Adults learn better by making mistakes. That's why I make so many. Um, and it's important that we let these committees make mistakes and learn from them on them, their own. I'll, I'll go back to a little league reference. When I'm umpiring and I'm sitting behind home plate and I've got the, the loud dad sitting in the stands and his son is pitching. And I literally see this after every pitch, the son looks up, looks at dad and sees and waiting for dad's reaction. And so what, what is that, that child learning? So um, I, I don't wanna see us getting into that. Um, and so what we, would, we could do is that we can correct mistakes through mentoring at different levels and in corrections that needed at the next level up. And I really need these committees to have the freedom and confidence to go make mistakes, knowing that our process has checks and balances that those mistakes will get caught later. Bad ideas leading to brainstorming. Um, part of our process is to provide the framework um, that is our, what our mission is and how we do it. And that's all spelled into the JPA language. Um, so, Bad ideas in this realm would be us leading to spending the money inappropriately. One reason to pursue, pursue bad ideas is that it's likely at some point, someone's gonna ask us, hey, did you consider X, Y, Z? And if we allowed the committees to pursue these bad ideas and come to the conclusion that hey, this, this isn't appropriate, this isn't a bad idea. And when that question gets asked, we get to say, yep, you know what? We explored that and we're not going to do it because of this. So, and, and it keeps us from having to repeat that process when it comes. And then when it comes to brainstorming, um, a lot of these people, they're, they're smart. And if someone comes up with a, uh, an idea that ends up, it's the other committee members go, well, that's not really a good idea. And it might take a meeting or two for this to germinate but it starts leading to better ideas and it creates innovation. And, um, you know, I've got a couple of examples. I'm not gonna bore you with them, but um, it had to do with buying a, a bulldozer for the Marine County Fire Department. And it had to buy, um, had to do with buying new helmets for all of our firefighters. And as the deputy chief, I had the authority to make the decision. Um, and I, we had committees that were going down a path and, um, I wasn't convinced that their path was the right path. And I, I let them, I, 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 and I knew what decision I had in my mind that I thought it, they should go down. And instead I let them go down their path. And in both instances, they came up with a better solution. Even though they started down a bad path, they, in both cases, they came up with better solutions than what I would have come up with on my own. And again, we need the, our committees to have the freedom to have that brainstorming and, um, let the accountability of the NWPA catch those. So here's my proposal. And this is how I think we can get there, how we can have a proactive EOC and still meet the language of the JPA without changing the language of the JPA. Completely, we got to continue the active monitoring of the boards and the committees and be fully engaged in those committees, um, not as sometimes people are, especially in the Zoom world, you got half an ear on the meeting and you got half an ear on the football game or whatever that's going on, or maybe it's dinner time. And anyway, um, fully engaged and taking notes. And, and um, so and if, and if an idea or discussion is observed, it doesn't seem to be legitimate. That's where, or in alignment with the mission, that's where I think the informal lines of communication come in. Uh, drop me a dime, give me a call, give me an email. Um, or this is where I, I think that we can start creating some more trust is that um, feel free to call the chair of that committee that was discussing it 
And Pat, I hope you don't mind that I'm going to use an example that you did, but at the advisory technical committee, and I, I see you're nodding, so thank you. Um, advisory technical committee, one of the members said something that I did the best to control my body language. And he said, well, we could just do whatever we want with the local mitigation dollars. And I'm like, um, and I, I sort of quickly and said, well, no, you can't. You have to use it towards local mitigation projects and it can't supplant what you've already been doing before MWPA ever came about. And um, a couple other guys piled on, which I appreciated, but Pat emailed me, hey, I'm, I was concerned by this comment and I addressed it, but she also brought up the 80% aspect of the five years. And she and I had a dialogue back and forth and, and I hope I, I met um, um, Pat's concerns on that. And so we were able to catch that at that informal level. And I've had a subsequent conversation with that gentleman offline and he, 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 it, it came out different than what he said it was supposed to come out, but now he's learning. He's not going to make that mistake ever again. And so, um, but then what, where I think that if, if the informal lines of communications don't work out and you're not happy with the, what you've heard from myself or the chair, and you've brought it back to the COC as an agenda item, and you deliberate it on it as the COC, and you guys come to the conclusion, we don't agree with this and we think we need to catch it early. Well, then my, my proposal will be to, uh, to the board, or unless you guys build it in, would be that you can set up an agenda item as a, like a committee report uh, at the executive committee. And then you can deliver the chair or the vice chair can deliver the, the voice of the COC at the executive committee level. They can choose to take action at that level or they can choose to put it, bring it to the full board and make a, a committee report at the full board for that agenda. And, you know, they could decide to work to, to completely agree with the COC. You, you know what, you're right. But let's let them work through their process or it might be big enough to, to say, no, we need to take action now and we're gonna take action now. So the, the low level stuff, I think we let them work through their process, stuff that are just completely off the wall, we wouldn't wanna correct that early. And so I think that allows us to be proactive, get your voice heard directly at the executive committee and at the board level. And we don't have to amend any um, pieces of the JPA. And you might be going, hey, why, did, why are you inserting yourself now in this? And, and so, like I said earlier, I, I feel like I developed a trust with you folks. And I wanted you guys to hear it from me that um, if, the J, if the bylaws went to the board with the invoice but not voting, my, my, I wasn't gonna be supportive of it. And my recommendation was going to be along the lines of what I discussed with you. Um, it, we, we, I think disagreeing is important. The most important part about disagreeing is how you handle that disagreement. And speaking of disagreeing, I think there is a distinct possibility, I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but there's, there's the opportunity that the COC may make a recommendation that the board does not agree with. And I think we need to be open to that possibility. And again, it's how we handle that disagreement. So I'm sorry I was on my soapbox for a while, but I, I thought it was important for you guys to hear it from me and some of my thoughts. Mark, thank you. And I just be, I'll open it up to the, the ad hoc subcommittee. I just want to say before we started this, before December 1st and after December 1st, before Mark said any of this, I said the same thing to Mark is that I didn't want the, the vision of we coming there and wagging our finger when they make a mistake. And that I said this, this very thing to Mark is that, is that there should be the freedom to make mistakes because it's such a complex thing. And if we are locking them down, we're, we're not going to be able to do the job if there's fear that we're always looking over the shoulder, their shoulder. And with that, who would like to uh, begin from the ad hoc committee? Max, uh, Max please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mark, uh, very much for those comments. Um, we actually have uh, some alternative uh, wording uh, that actually removes um, the, the voice but not, not voting piece. So uh, that's uh, actually a, a good segue uh, to what uh, we're bringing uh, the committee tonight. So we thought we would jump um, down to Article 5, um, Number 5, uh, and discuss that uh, to begin with. Um, and 
once we once we kind of come to a conclusion uh, on on that piece, um, then we can go through uh, hopefully relatively quickly and and with an eye towards you know focused discussion but not wordsmithing uh, the rest of the document. Um, the intention is to you know leave this meeting with an idea of of where this is and where this is going, so that next meeting uh, we can have a final vote um, and and not have to get into too much discussion, um, and then hopefully uh, get it to the board from there. And, and um, Max, it's yeah. Article, Article 4, four. Number 5 that we're starting. Sorry, Article 4, uh, Number 5, and, and it's in Roman numerals, and I, I didn't notice the I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we forgive you, Max. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. Um, uh, I do have um, a, a document here that, that Pat put together uh, very kindly uh, called Alternatives for Discussion. I'd be happy to screen share it um, if, if that's appropriate. I, I never know what's appropriate with the Brown Act if, if it hasn't been included in the packet, um, but I would need to be given access to screen share. If... And um, Larry, I'll lean on you a little bit, but I believe if we screen share and then include it as part of the minutes package, we're good with that. Okay, very good. And remember, oh, Larry, Larry, please tonight. So, so Max, Larry, that's not the wanna... PDF comments thing. Sorry, uh, the, there was a, a a document added to the agenda, which was uh, 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 comments. This was not in the agenda. This was developed after. Words. There, there are a lot of comments. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, so keep in mind that these two options here, uh, these two alternatives, um, are both different from uh, what what you've seen before, um, and this is to get at concerns that were raised by the COC um, and by uh, the legal counsel uh, for the MWPA in response to some of our questions. Um, and Mark, thank you for uh, connecting us and, and getting some, some read on that. I think that was helpful to, to focus our work. Um, so just going through this, um, you know, the, the, the key change here, right? Um, I mean, there's a couple of changes, but, but, but one piece, right, is removing that voting, uh, that voice but not voting uh, phrase. Uh, and to replace either, uh, you know, attend meetings uh, for the first uh, option or monitor meetings. And we can define, define these, um, maybe even define them over time in a procedures and, and process committee or uh, just, just in terms of how we, how we act upon them. But uh, Pat kindly put, put together uh, here on this document uh, some of what we discussed uh, as the bylaws a subcommittee in, in terms of what we think uh, this could mean and some of the upsides and downsides of each. Um, and, and just to, uh, in full disclosure, uh, three members uh, of the bylaws subcommittee uh, preferred attend, um, uh, including myself, and, and one person preferred uh, monitor. Uh, but I think we're all fine with, with either of these um, should, the, should the full committee uh, decide to go with one or the other. If people have uh, concerns or suggestions uh, for the rest of uh, the wording, I'm obviously happy to take them, but hopefully we don't get too much into, into wordsmithing. And uh, if you can live with the language as it is, or, or if someone suggests something and we edit one thing, uh, if you can live with that, then, then, that, then let's go with this um, and, and just focus on the attend uh, versus monitor uh, options. I have one question. Why wouldn't you attend and monitor the meeting? I don't quite understand. No, it, it's the separation. Not, no, it's not. It's not doing both. This is an alternative. As if if you do not, if as Mark would, I think prefer the monitor uh, version. That's a different way of going about it. Instead of attending the meeting being either a panelist or in the back of the room with the ability to uh, ask questions. Uh, the monitoring is what we're doing now. Um, uh, 
observing the meeting, being able to, to ask a question as a member of the public. So these are alternatives. These are not, not trying to say do both. It's do one or the other. Thank you, Pat. I thought that's what you meant, but I thought I would ask for clarification that in this in in this meaning, attend means being um, part of the voice, having a voice. In other words, yes. okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Rebecca, did you have? Oh, a comment? that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, I also see that um, uh, the the last part was was also uh, had had a couple of. Uh, uh, alternatives here that are underlined. Um, uh, we thought it was important um, hearing some of the suggestions from uh, non uh, bylaw subcommittee uh, members of the COC um, to reference MWPA founding documents. Uh, and one discussion we had was whether to say founding documents and Measure C or Measure C and founding documents or just say that Measure C is a founding document. So so it's, uh, it's, it's not necessary to call it out specifically. I think all of us are fine either way, but uh, that's why there's a slight um, difference there uh, for discussion. I almost feel like you could drop that last part and just, as a, just keep it simple and share observation. You, you could almost skip all of that and it still would have the same strength. So if, if folks are comfortable, uh, maybe we can go around and, and share our preference, um, kind of as a, not as a formal vote, but as kind of a straw poll. Okay. Uh, any other alternative um, suggestions? Uh, uh, can I ask you how the, the subcommittee voted on this? Is it three to one? Is... Uh, we, we all were in favor uh, of, of either of these. Uh, three of us preferred attend versus... Okay one person preferred monitor. I, I think that's fair to say, Lucy, Pat, Stephen, Rebecca. Uh, after, Max, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, um, Stephen, please, when yeah. Max is um, I like monitoring, <laughs> uh, but I don't have a strong preference on that. Um, I was the one, I was one of the people pushing hard for um, not a uh, voice, but not in voting. Uh, but I, Mark, I appreciate all of all of your wisdom on this subject. Uh, my concern uh, was primarily mission creep and hanky panky with the funds. But I realize another one is uh, relates to this thing because I was concerned that somewhere in the ATC or the Ops Committee, some something could get rolling so solidly that it would be really hard to, uh, to change directions or stop. But uh, I, you convinced me. So I'm, I'm happy to, to deal with it uh, a little bit more slowly and to allow people to figure things out on their own trust that they will and if they don't to, to uh, have a comment that maybe goes in at a higher level at the ops committee, the executive committee or the board. Um, so, um, and in in terms of whether we should have founding documents and measure C, I think founding, founding documents is a good catch all phrase for everything. Um, I have a question for Mark. Kingston, please. May I? Okay. Um, Mark, I mean, we have two options, but are, are either one, well, yeah. Which one do you think the board will, will accept, or there's a third option for the board? They don't accept either one of them. So, where do you think they're going to go on this? And I've been trying to be very, very careful with not creating a serial meeting with with conversations uh, with the board members. Um, and so it's been more listening to what they have to say. I haven't necessarily told um, board members what my proposition is but my gut feeling is they'll 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 bite on the monitor i don't think they're going to bite on the attend i believe so thank you uh, bite, bite meaning support you should, support that support. that's better right. better better word not to, not to use another phrase chew your head off over it yeah <laughs> <laughs> we've got three hands so let me go in order it's lucy and then carolyn and then rebecca 
Um, I uh, would prefer attend. Um, it leaves it up to us in the in the end what uh, how we choose to implement our comments if we have any. And I think that needs to be understood is that at I would say 98% of the time, we would have nothing to say. We, were, we wouldn't have any of the particular expertise. We wouldn't have any better ideas. We wouldn't be suggesting, no, you don't do it that way, you do it this way. We simply would be raising a question if we had it and asking for clarification. And it wouldn't be, as, wouldn't be, spokes as, wouldn't be the COC speaking. It would be somebody who had a question, who, was, who got some backward and maybe back and forth, clarified it, and that could completely be the end of it. Um, but the thing that I, I particularly, well, I, I have to say I just discovered this today um, based on what um, the MWPA's council wrote to us, is that in fact, we do not need the board to approve our minutes. Of course, I mean, our bylaws. Um, of course, we don't want to be producing something that's going to cause alarm, but I think the attend version gives us the space to define in our own policies and procedures how precisely we want to do it. And maybe Mark's version is the, uh, Mark's suggestion is, is a sensible way to go, but I think with the attend version, we leave our final policies and procedures to be defined by us, um, and it gives us the space to figure out really how we want to operate. Carolyn, um, the floor is yours. Well, I was just going to point out the same thing that as I read uh, Megan Acevedo's, I think that's her name, um, memo, it, it seemed to say that, that the board doesn't need to approve our bylaws. So, um, but be that as it may, I am more comfortable with mon the monitor option I think it's a closer tied in with the JPA language and it doesn't present the problem of someone speaking up without authorization from our full committee. Thank you, Carolyn. Uh, Rebecca and then Pat, I saw your hand up. Rebecca, the floor is yours. So a couple of um, observations. One is I, I prefer attend. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of transparency and the monitoring and using informal channels to discuss doesn't feel transparent. Um, transparency to me feels like you're attending the meeting, you watch what's going on. And if you have a question, as Lucy pointed out, I think 2% of the time or, or something in that neighborhood, you're gonna have something to ask a question about. The rest of the time, it's fine. No, no comment, no question. I certainly don't think we should be making, we should be giving advice or making comments or giving an opinion um, in that format, in that forum. Um, I definitely think if you if you feel like that's required, that's a go back to the full COC, give your report and ask for action. Um, I think speaking out loud in the meeting what that you are attending is is asking a question. That's it. Um, whatever else I just thought of is gone. <laughs> well, we can come back to you. It'll come back later. We can come back to you. Pat, Pat, you had your hand up. Did you still want to speak? Um, well, I just to say full disclosure, yeah. I'm the one person on the bylaws committee who prefers the monitor. Um, although I, I could live with either one. Uh, I think with the attend option, it was never anyone's intention to be a member of committees or to be throwing out opinions or constantly interjecting that it would be extreme. If, if we went with the attend option and it were approved, it would be a very rare occasion that uh, someone would have a, 
question to ask and and it has the advantage of the question could be asked in real time um, rather than um, getting the information uh, later. But I, I frankly think it's going to be, um, I, I think it would be exceedingly rare that we would uh, be seeing something that would be a problem. And for that reason, I just, I, I, I prefer the monitor and I don't think it's a weaker position. I think it allows us to uh, maintain our objectivity, um, but still have, um, um, we, we, we still have the power to uh, share our observations uh, either through the whole COC or um, uh, individually. And I know I'm a little bit with Rebecca, I have using, using informal channels is slightly less transparent, but at any rate, that's, that's my, my preference is for the monitor. Thank you, Pat. Larry, I, yes, please. Um, first, I wanna thank Mark for making his uh, recommendations. Um, I, I concur with what he has said and, and you know, I, I support that. I, I think we, we, we also both have a similar background in management sciences. And, you know, if you wanna get a better sense of his reference towards um, trust, uh, Stephen Covey, the author of um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People also wrote something on the speed of trust. And, you know, that's, that's a really good reference to, uh, you know, hone in on, on the, what he was trying to communicate to us. And, and the fact that what appears to be an informal communications doesn't necessarily mean that you, you lack transparency. So um, with that in mind, you know, I, I also do support the use of monitor. And um, I know Max, you were asking about the last part, if you felt that the last sentence might be too long. If you had any inkling towards shortening that, then, you know, you might say something like uh, alignment of work plans and expenditures. And then you can say in accordance with and that blank would be the uh, enabling resolution for the formation of the MWPA. Thank you, Larry. And um, I'll also say that um, I do support the monitoring part um, for a few reasons. And one is um, like several of you, I was there during this entire process. And we went over and over and over again what these different committees were going to be when they, when the discussion around the MWPA was being had, we spent a lot of time on the citizens aspect of that. And at no point, or I should say it was very clear, you had an operations board, you had an, a technical board, and you had the board of directors. And at no time was there language mixing citizens in. So I think it's Coming in now with it, I think is a little late. I also think it's unnecessary from a pact from really a practical standpoint, having attended all literally, I think every meeting uh, since December of the MWPA board and hearing from the public, maybe Carolyn one time and another individual one time in all those meetings actually speak, speak up. And then Pat really did something pretty wonderful here by having a question that went through an informal what we're calling informal is not necessarily a bad thing at all. Went informally, informally, but not really informally to Mark and asked, and asked Mark for clarification or made a point. And I think practically speaking, you know, it may be, well, 2% is just the number we're pulling out. It may be 0% where we're coming in. I, I just believe that monitoring is what we're about, was what we, we are supposed to do. And the most important function as citizens that, citizens advocates that we can do is to attend these meetings and understand what they're, what, what's going on. And, and there's so much going on, we're not gonna understand all, all the technical aspects of it. 
and nor are we expected to, but we're hearing it. And we know that they're working toward the things that they're supposed to be working toward. And if we feel otherwise, we have many opportunities to question that without having to actually be sitting there um, and to give feedback. Because even if we can't give it in that meeting, there's always an operations meeting or, or a board meeting where we can speak up and say something bothered us in an earlier meeting. So I, th I think as a committee and as individuals, we have many, many opportunities to, to really do what you want to do under attend without having to use that kind of phrasing or, or have uh, sort of a seat at, at the board there. Um, and with that, Max, I'll bring it back to you. Thank you. Sorry, I was muted there. Unless I'm mistaken, uh, we haven't heard from Kingston. Kingston, did you have anything further to add? Well, my only concern is I, mean, I, I spent years in politics and, I, um, and I'm still watching what's going on out there. But I know we're all good, civic-minded, virtuous uh, people on this, this committee. But my concern is that, that somebody five or six years out is not going to be, and they're going to end up uh, in one of these committees and not remember what we said about just asking a few questions. They're going to have an opinion. And I, that's, if you could design wording that said you're going to, 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 you know, to attend and will only limit yourself to asking questions, I might go along with it. It's, it's too open-ended the way it is. So therefore, I, I got to go with monitoring. Think so why we say something, if you look at the original language, it says that we will give feedback to the board. So it, it's specifically in the last line there. Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just, I, I just, uh, we have become un, so un, uncivil in our, in our, our meetings, public meetings in these days, and it's only gonna get worse in my opinion. I just, I, I can just see in the future, some, somebody, a real loudmouth getting in the wrong place on the COC and getting into these meetings and really interfering. So it's just me. No, I appreciate that because when I, I've said this to Mark too, when I'm looking at this, I'm looking well beyond when any of us are on this committee and what's really best for the future. So for, with that, I, I, I tend to agree with you, Kingston, on that point. You never know. You never know who's going to get on the committee in the future and, and what what they could do. Let's call. Yep. Yeah. Again, uh, Rebecca, please. And we do have the Policies and Procedures Committee, subcommittee, I'm not sure that's the right name for it. The rules. The rules and yeah, so they can define how the feedback will be or or the questions will be done, and to make sure that the that the you know if the procedure is you can ask questions, you can't give feedback, or you can ask questions, don't give an opinion. Um, you take your feedback and give it to. Mark, or, you know, we can, we, the committee, that committee that I'm not on can define how it should be done. We don't have to put that into the bylaws. May I say something? Because you're almost limiting yourself for a place where you don't need to be. I have been speak even though I'm, I've been on the MCL and other boards, I've spoken for years in front of public boards and said, I am speaking for myself. I am not. So you're always welcome to have an opinion and offer that. There's nothing that sh should prevent any of us from offering an opinion, as long as we're qualifying it as our personal opinion during one of these meetings. I think that's especially important for uh, us on the COC because we represent different interests, right? That's so right. Larry Minikis, for example, represents the environmental community and Kingston Cole represents uh, the taxpayer uh, groups, right? So it would, it would, it would not be appropriate to, to limit uh, Larry or Kingston to advocate for those, those interests, uh, regardless of whether they align with the full COC. It's just very, you know, you have to be clear on who you're representing where. That's exactly right. You just have to be clear. Uh, Larry, you want, you have your hand up, please. Yeah, um, I just wanted to let the committee know that I had a conflict with another right. meeting at seven o'clock. So uh, if you call to a vote and you end up 4-4, then we're just gonna have to pick this up another time. <laughs> But, um, you know, one, one of the things is, yeah, the, the comment that was just made about prefacing that it's a personal comment uh, is, is usually done. And I also find that it's never worked for at least me. 
because people will never disassociate my personal views from my views in terms of what my affiliation was. And at the time it was for the city of Larkspur. Right. So you, you need to kind of balance that out yourself and, um, you know, put it in context and, and how the audience will interpret what you say. Very good, Larry. So with that, good luck with the rest of your conversation and we'll see you the next time. <laughs> Take care, Larry. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Always appreciate your, your wisdom from your years on the board there. So thank you. Max, please. Yeah, so, so just to wrap, wrap this piece up, um, I wrote down uh, uh, folks' names. Um, it, it, it looks to me, uh, you know, I, I, was, I was among the attend because I, I thought that the rationale uh, for attend made a lot of sense in terms of, you know, we could then define it, define it in procedures and processes and exactly what we want to mean to be attend. And we're not kind of constraining ourselves uh, into something within the bylaws uh, initially. Um, but uh, it seems that, that, that us attend folks got, got overruled, which is fine, because I think um, the three folks on our, our subcommittee that, that favored attend were, were also open to, to the alternative. So I have here um, uh, six people uh, for, for, for monitor uh, plus Mark uh, and three for attend. So uh, we will work with um, uh, as a committee to, to update that. Um, Larry suggested uh, some alternative wording. I wrote it down uh, for the end, uh, which is which is great. It seemed like um, generally people were fine uh, with with both of these versions. And in general, there was a mention maybe you don't need to mention uh, Measure C and founding documents, um, which I think we already were leaning towards. So that's fine. Um, I think we're we're ready if if folks are ready are okay with it uh, to move on to the rest of the document. Uh, with an eye towards, um, you know, just kind of a focused discussion of, of any anything else we we want to cover versus, um, you know, wordsmithing or, or getting too much into the weeds. Okay, and, and let me make clear. I, I, I assume we're everyone's in agreement. We're not taking a vote this evening. We're we're going to just wordsmith. Okay, please, Max, continue. Right. Um, Lucy, are you able to to lead us through a discussion of the broader document? If I stop sharing and do oh, uh, you want to put it up on the share that is that what? Uh, sure I, I can do that. Um, I'm going to share from um, Mark's uh, agenda packet if that works. But by the way, I, I would like to go on record to saying that I very strongly uh, uh, I am in favor of the attend language um, and um, when it comes to a vote, it'll come to a vote, and I might well be overruled, but I feel that this is exactly where we should be going, where we should be defining for ourselves in detail how we would conduct ourselves and what we would say, but that we should be establishing a model for ourselves where we can speak at when we need to and according to a particular protocol um, and get something easily settled immediately and transparently transparently, uh, and then move on. It just seems to me that we're um, not the best option here. But putting that aside, let's move on to discuss any of the um, other sections of the agreement, uh, of the bylaws, um, and... Bless you. Thanks. We can... I, I'm assuming most of you have had the opportunity to read them. Um, there, there, we, we took into account a number of different comments from different people. Some of them were actually cross purposes, um, but in the end, this is what we felt covered what we wanted to do and say. Um, I don't know if anybody has any very strong feelings um, that this is where we ended up with purpose, which is one of our more discussed items. Um, I, it's, it, the language comes as close um, as possible to the language from the JPA agreement. Um, it just covers what's in there um, and um, lays out a, the, the, the specific, specifics of what was in that document in the agreement. You can move on to any, anybody have anything there? Uh, 
one can say about that. Okay, let's move on to organization. Um, that's all, um, I think, unremarkable. Nothing's changed. Um, um, okay, so th this is where we ended up um, on the terms, and we decided one, two, and three is the way to go. Beginning as of January 2021 was, in fact, the simplest way to do it. Otherwise, we would end up having... It, it was a long discussion. Um, this is where we felt this meeting our goals of turnover, since we'd like to feel that the public and, uh, and everyone else is sort of finds this an accessible committee. Um, we, um, we, we settled on the 2021 as being the beginning of, of the terms and we still will have to do um, once this, these are adopted, we'll have to do the drawing of the lots to determine who, who gets which term. Um, so we've covered, I think, the members' responsibilities. Um, we slightly reordered, other than the Article 5, we moved up a couple of items. Three and four were below, and we moved them up. Um, nothing else substantive has changed. Um, next item. Um, that's, that remained as it was. Um, we picked Rosenberg's rules of order rather than Roberts, even though some of the other committees actually have Roberts, but Rosenberg seemed simpler. So we decided to use that one. Um, so, uh, which altered the language a little bit about the government code sections. That's nothing substantive. Um, this remained the same. Um, that's the same. No, I, I did. I did think there were any. Um, now, so that, well, let's talk about the effective date and amendments. Um, these bylaws, it says, shall be effective upon their approval at a meeting of the board of directors. Uh, it now seems that that, in fact, is not the way that this is done. So we might not, we might delete that. Um, um, and I don't know whether the, if we make an am amendment or a, a repeal a bylaw, we, it, it appears, do not need the approval of the MWP. PA Board of Directors. So we might take that out, um, but it's, once again, I don't think that's a very substantive difference as far as our concerns go. So that's that's it. Could, could you, I ask you to go back to Article 3 for terms for a second? I, I, something caught my eye and I just want to ask a question. I'm not seeing it on my copy for some reason, where it says initial term um, there was language that said that um, there will be three new members shall be replaced every year. That that wouldn't be correct. You're not going to replace three members every year. What what? What's it, what's right in the middle, three members of the committee shall be replaced every year. Okay, so if somebody's one year and then they, if if three members are one year, they'll have to be replaced by a new three. And then if the two year group then gets has to leave, they'll have to be replaced by three new. Um, third year, so if it's one, two and three years, each one has a term that expends, ex, ex, expires during one of those, there'll be three new ones every year or th it could be a uh, somebody doing a consecutive. It's, uh, am, I, am I missing something? Yeah, Lucy, it kind of reads like next year we're going to have to replace three members, 2022, and then 2023 we're going to have to replace three more, and then 2024 we're going to have to play, replace three more. Is how I read it right now. Well, it that that would be true unless someone um, is reappointed. Three, pe three people draw a one year, then their term is up. And unless they're reappointed, I mean, that was why we landed on the three uh, years because they're nine members, so it's equally divisible. So why wouldn't you have 
all nine members first serve the first three years and then kick in the one, two, three at the end of the first three years. Why do it the opposite way? Because at the end of the th first three years, we may have a different dynamic going on. Yeah. And at that point, we can we can make changes. I, I'm I'm just curious as to why it has to why it couldn't be reversed and run maybe even better that way. Just a question. That's I think that's a possibility. It, 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 that's one way of, of handling it. I I wouldn't be against that. It would seem to simplify things. I think a little bit. I don't know whether it simplifies it, but I like it. It's a, Can you restate what it is, what the proposal is? That all, all members serve three-year terms. The, because it's, it's specific to this group. It's not going to happen later. And that at the end of three years, this, however, whether it's two, three, four, or one, two, three, at the end of the day, th that we have staggered terms. The staggered terms actually don't kick in until the end of the first three years. So we're all serving three years for certain. And unless, of course, we step off, excuse me. We all have three-year terms to begin with. And then when we come at the end of three years, um, that's when we can go to the staggered terms. And we may find that we may not even need it, that within the rules committee, we may need to make changes because the dynamic of this committee may have changed by then for any number of reasons, of course. Three years is, can be a long time. So doesn't that assume that at the so if the terms are three years, then at the end of the first chunk of three years, we're going to be drawing lots to see who gets one, two, or three, or two, three, or four, whatever we're going to do there. Right. Additional. Ad additional, yes. Yeah. So that assumes that everybody who was here for the first term is getting a second term. Of some length, yes. Some length. I, I don't see an advantage of putting the uh, putting it off for three years. I, I, I don't. It doesn't. Doesn't seem advantageous to me. Well, Carolyn, if you have if you have three people who say step off between now and then, you've automatically built staggered terms in there. You may not even need to use the 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 drawing straws. It, it, the dynamic may have changed completely. It may make it easier. Is what I'm suggesting. Okay. It just may make it easier on the board. That's all I'm suggesting. It can go either way. Anyone else at this point? We're, we're running over. Okay, why don't we just leave that on the table? We're not really looking to make decisions or votes. I just wanted to bring that one point up. It caught my eye. Just a suggestion uh, in the interest of, of time. Um, why, why don't, because we're not voting on it tonight, um, mm -hmm. and so far, I, I think we probably should go to members of the public if there's anyone, but. So far from this from this group, uh, it seems like this is the only area for for possible uh, changes. Why doesn't the bylaws subcommittee put together two alternatives, kind of like how we did on uh, Article Four, Number Five, and then, uh, just for for a decision? And, uh, Pat, Pat, please. Could could I suggest that if you if you have a different opinion from uh, the way this is written that you write up uh, how you think that it should be written and um, fairly quickly get it to the committee because we will probably meet fairly soon, although we probably won't meet this weekend, but. Okay, well, I gave a verbal. Okay. Suggestion. So I don't know that I need to write it. Uh, Carolyn, please, your hand is up. Uh, yes, I do have a few more comments. Um, three more. Um, so I could, I'd be happy to just send them to Mark and have him forward. Um, I, I, they are things I've maybe brought up before. Um, uh, but I could run through them right now if, if you want to. I, I think run through them because oftentimes we're like, okay. This is where we've arrived, right? And so if we meet again, then we're 
Okay, I, I'm happy to do that, but you know, you didn't invite people to do that. So, uh, okay. Um, yeah, partnership entities in Article 4, Section 5, I, you know, still uh, is unsatisfactory to me. It seems to me we should define what other entities we're going to be attending the meetings for. So that's something. Um, in Article 5, this is the one about, um, you know, bring it down if you would, that'd be great. Um, no member shall act as the official spokesman. We could start with a phrase, except as provided in the previous article where we are, uh, you know, attending meetings and making comments. Uh, and it's just one way to resolve the, uh, there's a bit of a contradiction there. Yeah. And then sec, uh, Article 7, it seems to me that six months for the chair is, is too short a term. It should be at least a year. And also, we're providing that the vice chair will step into the chair when the chair's term expires, but we don't address what happens. Maybe I'm missing something, but it seems to me that you need to provide for you know, other turnover after the vice chair, his term expires, his or her. So those are my three comments. Thank you, Carolyn. That might go into the rules committee or maybe not. Um, you guys in the bylaws committee can decide. Uh, Max, please, your hand. Is yeah, uh, I, I can help answer the, the first two um, suggestions. Um, for the first one for partnership entities, um, uh -huh. We, we define these as official partners, right? So ESP, yes, it's on the website. It's included under a list of partners, right? Fern or a chamber of commerce that seeks to, you know, provide comment or the Sierra Club or anyone else, mm -hmm. no, right? Not mm -hmm. a, not an official partner. Um, so Why I think- Why don't we just say ESP in there then? Why don't we just there, name it? Because there may be additional partners yeah. over time, right? Yeah. Um, well, you for, can say that, you know. for, for example, FireSafe Marin could be an official partner. Um, it's not currently, it's not mentioned on the website, right? But it, uh -huh. well, okay. it, it is in a way, yeah. yeah well, it it, well, it's <laughs> it, it's not because when I go to the MWPA website and look under partners, it's not there. So, <laughs> um, it, you know, it's a, it, it may be an unofficial partner, but I don't think it's a partnership entity as... It's a contractor. It still strikes me as unsatisfactory. Not even if you're going to use the phrase, it needs to be defined, you know, so we can tell the difference between a what is a what is and isn't uh, a partnership entity. Not not to put words in uh, uh, the the attorney on our bylaws uh, subcommittee's mouth, but um, I think what Lucy, correct me if I'm wrong, but what you would say is is that that's. That, that any definition is for policies and procedure, procedures, not for bylaws. Um, and anything that, that ex explains what the bylaws are um, can, can- Oh, I see, it would be addressed there. Yeah. Uh, kicking uh, the can down the road a bit, but. <laughs> yeah. um, and, then, and then for the, for five, um, I think the way that we understood the, this is, is that because it says specifically authorized by the committee that that left open that, you know, the committee being the COC could, could authorize, for example, um, you know, we could authorize, uh, you know, Pat to, to speak at a public forum, or we could authorize, um, you know, Larry Chu to speak to the Marin IJ or Kingston Cole to speak <laughs> to Supervisor Dennis Rodoni or, 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 or what have you. Um, no. So it doesn't apply to attending meetings as a representative of the committee as the previous article contemplates? I guess that's what you're saying. Yeah, I, I, I think spokesperson is more external to, uh -huh. the, to the MWPA, right? Okay. Those, those, are with, those are things within the MWPA, which is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. 
right? Like if someone's speaking to the Marin IJ, right? That's that's very different than someone yeah. speaking to the Mark. Uh, yes. Right. In the in the six month versus a year term for the chair. Yeah, I think I think all of us were I felt that um, uh, six months was appropriate with the understanding that. Um, it's really a partnership between the chair and the vice chair, uh, and that as 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 these bylaws proposed and as we've we've discussed and, and seem to get at least a a, a majority um, uh, buy-in from from this body, uh, that it would be kind of a not not a weak chair, but that it'd be a more of a collaborative body, and so it's not it's not that the chair, you know, it's not that someone when they step off being chair. Has all of a sudden lost so much power, right? <laughs> they could still be authorized to be a spokesperson. They could still be authorized to work on uh, the report. They could still be a lead of a subcommittee. They could still be uh, the the representative uh, to monitor the board, right? Um, they they won't be you know kind of chairing these meetings, but they won't have lost that much that much power. And so that can help rotate through people on here. Uh, people could serve uh, to be chair multiple times. Uh, over over uh, their term or terms uh, if they serve two terms, but that it really would be that partnership between the chair and the vice chair over a year. As you know, I've not been in favor of the six month um, idea for many reasons, but I, I, sitting as chair, I don't think it's about power in the least. I think it's about continuity more than anything else. And that, that has always been my interest. And I'm always thinking beyond myself and beyond being even involved is that is that it's in the interest of the MWPA to have continuity with each one of these committees and not doing this uh, to to Kingston's comments. You could get some big mouth who's got all these ideas who is inappropriate for a chair, but because you're turning your chair every six months, it's their turn. So and uh, this is not us. It's no. not us. I'm, I'm I'm speaking to the future. Yeah, yeah, but Larry. The issue is if somebody's got a big mouth, then at six months we get them out. So, and this, well, this whole, yeah, this whole thing was discussed last meeting. Yeah, up, you made a you made a strong plea for uh, a year's term, and uh, I thought that we had a, an informal poll of the membership. And Carolyn, I don't know, I don't remember what you said, but most everybody as I believe, uh, said that they like the idea of uh, rotating it fairly, fairly rapidly and that six months seemed appropriate. That it did, it really, this is such a small group and we, we work things out collaboratively that it's not going to really make a whole load of difference who's the chair because you don't have a lot more power than the rest of us. Mm -hmm. That's kind of my point. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, yeah, you're sort of touching on my point. Pat, you had your hand up. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say that I don't think we ever envisioned this is rotating through all of the members. It's still elected that it actually happens that after the first group is elected, we'll be electing a vice chair every six months. And we may decide that we love having Larry and we will have him back for another six months. Uh, it just won't be continuous or uh, we decide we want someone else. It's not like the mayorship of all the general law cities where it's going to rotate through them all. It's uh, still going to be a choice. Um, but I think the majority of people preferred the, the six months. I, I'm sorry I, if I overlooked that. I don't recall it myself, but fine. If it was a consensus, that's, that's good. Okay. Okay. I think we've been through this thing about three yes. or four times. I'm yes. just, I'd like to call the question or stop beating a dead horse here someplace. God. <laughs> So, so I think next uh, next meeting uh, we bring uh, a final proposal with a vote, um, and it'll include uh, the monitor word, a, a couple other changes we just discussed. And um, if anyone has anything else to add, please please let us know uh, via Mark. But um, you know, keeping in mind that that this is you know more 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 on the oh you caught a ty typo and not and not the substance. <laughs>
Thank so, you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. That's right. Thank you. Okay, so let's move on to item number 11, which is information items. Does anyone have any items of information they would like to bring before the committee at this point? Seeing none. Ah, Stephen, please. I have a question. Do we need to open in this thing to public expression? I, I don't think we've got any. We don't have any public. This is why I have not been calling it. Okay. If, if you're wondering why I've been skipping through these items, not asking the public, because there's no one to ask. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it, it's good checks and balances. Yeah, it certainly is. It certainly is. I've been uh, nobody likes us. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, they like their Tuesdays more than their Wednesdays, apparently. <laughs> this is this is a first we have not had an mwpa wow. meeting with no members of the public before right it is a first <laughs> okay well uh, wait, wait, wait. Pam pamela is here sitting on the side <laughs> <laughs> she's fe she's feeling left out so okay <laughs> we'll move Sorry. on to item, item number 12 which are future uh board members requests for future agenda items people anyone Hands. Pat. Well, obviously, on the next agenda, we have to have a final vote for sure. Uh, um, the, and I think as a that that having reports uh, back from everyone for the committees that they have yes. been monitoring uh, should be a standard part of every agenda. Yeah, I, I have a question regarding that. Would you like it to be a verbal report or would you like it that people could submit the report to be part of the agenda packet? And if it's if it's going to be part of the agenda packet, then there's going to be a certain timeline when I need to receive those reports. Right. Mom. I have no preference. I, it's, it's for you guys. I'm sort of leaning towards verbal for the time being. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Okay, I'll fix that typo that's in there and I'll make it a standing agenda item. And I, I think one weakness we have, I don't know if I'd call it a weakness, it's, it's during development, is who's going to speak for each one of these committees? Who, who's taking on responsibilities? If, we're all, if three of us are going to operations, are all three of us are going to speak, for example? Pat, please. Well, I, I think this is something that uh, could um, be a part of this policies and procedures Fair if enough. we are going with the monitoring language and we can have it It actually the way we have it worded in there is as a sign we can assign a lead person to each one and then everyone's free to monitor anything they want to but if if we acknowledge a lead person uh, for each group, then that person could defer to someone else, but. Um, Why can't the, the people in the group make up their minds about who's going to be the lead? Okay, and that would work. I too. agree with that. Yeah, you know, there is one issue is because when we're attending these meetings, we don't know who else from our committee is there, mm -hmm. generally speaking. Not, not necessarily. Well, all the ones I've attended, I unless we've spoken between ourselves, I, I don't know who else is which ones of us. Yeah, are, we, we at least know who else is assigned. Right. Uh, and yeah. we, we can we can work on that. Okay. Okay. I watch all these meetings. I go to every one of them. I do too. <laughs> well, God I bless did. you both and me I, too. So I didn't go to the finance committee meeting, but no, I, I didn't either. You're right. Every I other one. Back. I take it back. I miss that. That's the hot one. <laughs> <laughs> well, for right. us, it might be. <laughs> Folks, we're, we're, we're wrapping up, but uh, okay. really good here. And um, I will ask uh, item number 13 for adjournment. I so move. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor. I don't know if you know this, but I just drove 528 miles and I made it 10 minutes within 10 minutes to get to this meeting. So oh, pretty no. damn good commute from my daughter's oh, house. Vegas, Mary. Okay. No, I was up at my daughter's up in Lowell, up in near Eugene, so for her birthday, for her birthday. Well, wonderful, uh, it's a pleasure. Um, I wish you all a wonderful evening. Uh, we're finishing on time. Mark, thank you so much for, for your, your part of this. And uh, with that, um, let's close the meeting. Have a good thank evening. Thank you, everyone. Everybody. Thank you, see you all.